Pokemon Horizons Episode 18, Flying Pikachu Soaring High, just aired, and it went over Captain Pikachu and Freed's entire backstory. Let's talk about it. The episode begins with Liko, Roy, and Dot in Dot's room, where Liko and Roy tell Dot the interesting thing that just happened. Captain Pikachu was flying in their battle last episode. While they're talking, we see that their Pokemon are interacting in the background, something that happens a lot throughout this episode, and I really enjoyed it. Dot notes that Pikachus normally can't fly, so now all of them are interested to see how Captain Pikachu learned to fly. Also, Roy asks Dot since when has Pikachu been the ship's captain, and Dot answers that ever since she joined the ship, Captain Pikachu has already been the captain. So with all these mysteries about Captain Pikachu, Liko hatches a plan to ask Freed about his backstory with Captain Pikachu. They creatively make their interview into a neato thing video, because they thought that it's going to make Dot more popular. But as soon as they enter the captain's room, Freed instantly stops him because he doesn't want to be interviewed. Despite Dot pleading and reasoning out that this interview can help her channel to the point that she could even pass Iona in popularity, Freed still refuses to do so. So they go for plan B and ask Molly about it. Molly tells them how tough Cap is to the point that she's never really healed him before. So they proceeded to ask Murdoch and he says that he's good because he isn't a picky eater. Then next is Ludlow and he says that Captain Pikachu is the original member of the Rising Bull Tackler and without him they wouldn't be a team. And finally they go to Orla as they happily drink a fresh glass of Shuckles Berry Juice. She tells them that they are childhood friends from Kanto but she moved to Hoenn and didn't meet him again until she built the Brave Asagi. I learned a new Japanese word which is Osana Najimi and it means childhood friends so go flex on your friends with that word. Instead of telling Nico and Roy she thinks of a better idea and so she calls everyone to a meeting where Freed can narrate his own story with Captain Pikachu. Of course this makes Freed embarrassed but Orla and everyone else eventually persuade him to do it. All of them except Dot who is listening from her phone gather around the dining table as Freed tells them the story behind Captain Pikachu and the rising bull tacklers. It was really nice to see them all gather around the table for further bonding, it always makes for fun scenes and it was cool how they included all of the members in this episode. A long time ago, probably around 5 or 6 years ago, Freed and Ludlow were fishing on Ludlow's boat called the Asagi. Ludlow is basically trying to reassure Freed about things as he is currently on break from being a researcher and has no motivation to do anything right now. Freed manages to snag a Pokemon and it's a slow bro, but it jumps back into the water. I really love this scene as it was just so derpy and out of place. Freed lays on the boat and starts contemplating about life. He even does the iconic Pokemon Horizons exclusive stretching his hand towards the sky. I'm going to call that the Liko Reach from now on. Freed eventually receives a call from someone and the scene immediately transitions to a restaurant in Medali City where he and Charizard casually walk in. Oh hey, Larry is even here and honestly I totally fangirl at this moment. Horizons has already shown 3 out of 8 gym leaders in the first 18 episodes which is absolutely unreal considering what we got in Pokemon Journeys. I also love how low-key his appearance was, which is totally perfect and totally suits Larry. But the person that he's actually meeting up with is Ruka-sensei, Liko's mom. Ruka reveals to his former student that she's now married and started a family, to which Freed responds that getting married and having kids just isn't something that he's interested in right now. Ruka then asks why Freed quit being a Pokemon professor when there's lots of stuff to be researched on. Freed boastfully claims that he's already a skilled researcher and there's nothing that he doesn't already know about Pokemon. Of course, Ruka sees right through his real emotions and points out that Freed just doesn't really know what to do with his life. Ruka then asks Freed if he's available tomorrow morning because there's somebody that she'd like him to meet. The next day before sunrise, Ruka and Freed meet up in the forest and she introduces him to a Pikachu sleeping under a tree. At first, Freed is very unimpressed because he knows all about Pikachu. This Pikachu eventually wakes up and goes somewhere and as soon as the sun rises, the electric mouse starts spinning around, forming a circular trail of electricity. A smoky tornado rises from the ground which instantly captures Charger's attention. He alarms Freed of this amazing sight and their faces are filled with shock and awe as they see Pikachu falling from the top of the smoky tornado. Pikachu then starts flying through the air and gracefully lands on the ground. Freed is amazed with this sight and is now super interested in this mysterious Pikachu. Pikachu goes back to rest as Freed approaches him. Pikachu is not happy about this interaction so he tackles Freed to the point of hurting him, but Ruka is more concerned about Pikachu who seems to have taken a lot of energy during his training. Pikachu runs away, but Freed never stops following him all morning. They play chase until Freed gets exhausted and gives up. Next, Freed and Charizard gather some berries to give Pikachu as he starts doing squats on its tail. Pikachu eventually gets tired and eats some of the berries by himself. The next day, Freed and Charizard go back to meet Pikachu, but it tackles him again. This time though, Freed is prepared and counters it. Pikachu tackles again, but this time aims for the head. They push their heads against each other for a bit, even Charizard is hyped about this, but then Pikachu just uses Thunderbolt and wins the head-on battle. Later that day, Freed keeps observing on Pikachu, but this time it's from a distance. At this time, Ruka is washing some apples until a child's voice calls her from nearby. It's little Liko, who's probably like 4 or 5 years old at this time. She hugs her mother and is curious who it was that she's talking with on the phone. Ruka tells her that it's somebody that Liko will probably meet in the future. 
Free to continue to observe Pikachu's flying training, and after a few days, he decides to witness this wonderful sight up close. As soon as Pikachu creates an electric whirlpool, Free quickly hops on Charizard's back and glides closer to Pikachu. The three of them are amazed at the beautiful horizon, and Free and Pikachu both give each other a cool thumbs up. Pikachu loses his concentration and falls horribly towards the ground. Good thing Freed is there to catch him with his hand. Soon after, Freed asks Pikachu if he wants to join his team and go on amazing adventures together, and Pikachu quickly accepts the proposal and has now becomes Freed's partner Pokemon. Freed goes back to Ludlow's ship and asks if he can be in charge of the boat. Ludlow casually agrees and now Freed asks his friend Orla for help so she could rebuild the boat. Orla says that he'd have to pay her for this, but he has no money, so Orla proposes a different idea and says that in exchange for the rebuilding, he should allow her to join the team. It was fun to see that at this point her metagross was still a Metang, which implies that it evolved some point on their adventures, which I wonder if we'll get to see at some point. I also want to know when and how did Murdoch, Molly, and Dodge join the Rising Voltaclers 2, and who was the most recent joinee besides Liko and Roy. Freed agrees to this and Orla and her team rebuild the boat in no time. Freed renames the new ship as Brave Asagi and names Captain Pikachu as, well, the captain of the ship. With that, the Rising Voltaclers are formed and Freed drives the ship to the sky. Freed's story ends and everyone is entertained by the story. Liko especially was surprised that her mom was Freed's teacher. Freed tells her that without her mother's help, him and Cap wouldn't be together, and the episode ends with them approaching the Gala region. The episode was truly breathtaking, it was really fun to see the backstory between Freed and Captain Pikachu, two of my favorite characters in the Horizons anime. Their backstory was really well executed and it didn't feel forced at all. I really enjoyed how they built it up and it felt very well done on both of their ends. I wish that they showed the capture on screen and not just cut to Pikachu getting caught, however. This episode did a fantastic job of showing us all of the Voltaculars, despite it primarily being a Freed and Captain Pikachu focused episode. The inclusion of Larry of course boosts the overall rating, Pokemon and characters in the background were constantly moving and not making for any dead scenes, Freed's Charger personality was shown off extremely well and was consistent all throughout the episode, the epic highs of this episode were also highlighted very well with the soundtracks playing. This episode was perfection, and for that, it gets a 10 out of 10 rating for me. It's actually the first thing that I've given Horizons episode, and I'm actually okay with that because I thoroughly enjoyed this episode that much. Enough of this episode, let's take a look at the next episode's preview. We arrive in Galar and Liko and the gang are in search of famous cotton candy. It looks like the character of the day, and the person who makes him is the chef guy who loses a battle with his vanilla. -y. Him and Murdoch appear to be cooking rivals, and it's nice to see that it looks like this will be a Murdoch-focused episode. However, with it being one, I feel that this episode will be just an easygoing one and it's just getting ready for this major episode 20 that we're going to have. This episode's title is A Creamy's Truth. Pokemon Horizons has truly been such a consistently good show ever since it started airing and I'm truly grateful for it and all of you guys for continuously supporting these episode reviews, like they're actually doing much better than the Journey's ones overall. I've talked to so many of you on Discord and I truly appreciate you joining the server and talking about Horizons consistently on there, it's super fun to discuss it with you guys. If you also want to join the server and talk about Horizons, be sure to click the link in the description or in the pinned comment. Last week I didn't make episode 17's episode review because I was really busy at Worlds with Starmeister. We both watched the episode together and thought that it was just okay, but we just didn't go on with making an episode review cause well, we were really busy there. But he's actually still with me this week, however it's not Pokemon World Championship, so I thought it'd be really cool if he could just introduce himself really fast while I have him here live next to me. Yo, champs in the making, Star Meister here. Yeah, it was really fun watching last week's episode and today's episode with Lua up here in Japan. Thank you all so much for always supporting us, and reading all your messages in Discord was really heartfelt. In today's episode, we got the reveal of Freed and Captain Pikachu's backstory, and I'm just overall curious to which of the main cast Pokemon do you think had the best capture? Sprigatito, Fococo, Quaxley, or Pikachu? For me, it's a very biased answer, and I'm gonna go with Freed and Pikachu. Their friendship felt so natural, and of course they're the coolest duo ever. Make sure to answer the question with the hashtag QLTD so I know that you're a real one. And of course, if you made it this far into the video, I wanna say that I truly, truly appreciate you. But with that being said, it's been your boy Luap. And I'm out. Peace.